morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Moodle Moot Global 2020. My name is Michael Blake. I work in the commercial team at Moodle HQ. You are in the education room and our next presentation is ready to go. Our next presenters are Roland Sherwood and Na Li uh, from the Jiang Jiaotong Liverpool University. And their presentation is entitled, Moodle as a Noah's Ark in Higher Education, a Case Study from China. So with that, I'll hand over to Roland and Nali. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. And hello to everyone watching, wherever you might be, whatever time it might be, uh, wherever you are. Uh, yep, yeah, our presentation is Moodle as a Noah's Ark in higher education. Um, and very quickly, um, this is, uh, oh, sorry, this is who we are. My name is uh, Roland Sherwood. I'm the manager for educational technologies at Shenzhen Tong Liverpool University. My name is Nali. I'm the senior educational technologist from the same university. And uh, as you can gather from the, the topic of our presentation, the, the, the flood uh, that we're, we're talking about here is, is the COVID-19 situation that hit us and our institution in China quite hard way back in January. Obviously, being based in China, we were one of the first, uh, among the first sort of institutions really hit by the COVID-19 situation and then having to, to move everything online. Um, so we're taking that as our theme and, and Moodle as our arc that, that saw us through this, uh, this flood situation that we've had for the last few months. Um, so we, uh, just very quickly, by the way, in terms of our institution and, and, and where we are and who we are, we're a very young institution. Um, we're a joint partnership between Shenzhen Tong University in China and the University of Liverpool in the UK. We have about 15,000 students and 1,000 teachers. Um, we teach everything in English. And we have a, a historically quite a strong focus on using technology, in particular Moodle, but also Big Blue Button and Mahara and, and other bits and pieces within our um, institutional learning and teaching delivery. Um, this is this is our campus. And uh, also just interestingly, we, we organized the first Moodle Moot event in uh, mainland China just last year. And we were, we were actually very happy to have um, Martin as part of that event as well. So that's just a little bit about who we are. Um, but I'll hand over now to my colleague, Lena. Thank you, Roland. So before the flood, we were doing blended learning on Moodle and it was uh, back to the December, which is the end of the semester. As you can see from this picture, our students, they can take face-to-face -face class as well as having the Moodle-based virtual learning environment as their online learning platform. This is the uh, front page of our Moodle-based VLE. And we have started to use Moodle since 2006 and we have integrated many different technologies into the Moodle-based BLE. Then we heard about the sad news about the virus in Wuhan. Although Wuhan is a city quite far away from our city in Suzhou, so we were not so worried at that moment. We still had a good break in the spring festival, but during the spring festival uh, holidays, we heard uh, the situation just become more serious and uh, the travel restrictions were imposed. We were uh, locked down at home, as you know, and uh, also we heard uh, the, uh, the new target for us was to uh, support fully online education for the whole university. And the first five or six weeks, we think, okay, five or six weeks, it's a target that uh, uh, possible. But uh, it's still quite challenging because our staff and students, they are from different uh, cities all over the world. They have the different time zones. We need to consider these challenges uh, when we design the support and the online education for them. And in relation to the technology platform, the Moodle as our ARC, we also need to optimize it 
to better facilitate the over 15,000 students and 1,000 teachers all over the world. And we've, we've obviously talked about Moodle there, but uh, in fact, Big Blue Button was a part of this, a big part of this project as well. We, um, before the, the flood hit us, we, ha we actually had one Big Blue Button server, but of course, one Big Blue, Big Blue Button server is not going to support a large number of students and staff. Um, we never had the demand to do fully online learning in this way previously, so that's that's why we had sort of limited resources in that sense. But uh, very quickly and rapidly, we had to develop a new, highly scalable, load balanced Big Blue Button solution, which uh, I'm very happy to report we were able to do within about three weeks with the the, the amazing support of Fred and his team over at Big Blue Button HQ. Um, so yes, we were able to, to, to very quickly put that into place to help us with that part of this puzzle. Um, another challenge that we faced is the, the size of the team the team that supports educational technologies within the institution. It's a very small team. Uh, and unfortunately, unlike in the picture, we don't have lots of animals to help us and, and, and contribute to our efforts. We're, as you can see, we're a very small team of people supporting a very large number of staff. Um, but we did our best, we set to work, and we, we set about developing resources and support for staff in various ways. We developed lots of guides, um, lots of you know, user guides and, and tutorials and things like that. We also had to develop policies and, and frameworks to, to outline expectations around the use of online learning and teaching. Um, and we also made, again, sort of guides relating to uh, the various technologies that are available and how they could be appropriately used and, and incorporated into people's teaching delivery. Um, all of that content we put here onto, onto Moodle itself, and then we made that available for our staff to browse around and access whatever they needed um, in, 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 that, in that way. Um, we also did the same for Big Blue Button. Again, a very big, big, important part of this puzzle for us, and we wanted to make sure people were properly supported with using that in their in their day-to-day -day learning teaching activities. And then, in addition to all of that, we had to very quickly develop a, a program of training activities online, delivered through Big Blue Button, um, to, to again help to familiarise students and staff with using these technologies, and just to answer any questions that they might have about that as well. You're, you're seeing some of those things here. That's a that's a sort of screenshot of one of the, the session recordings. Um, but the Moodle community was also a big part of this process for us as well. While we were doing all of this work and sort of scratching our heads about how to solve various problems, we were actively looking at the, the forums on Moodle.org and, and listening to what people were talking about there and how they were dealing with problems. And we were sharing ideas and we were taking ideas from other people. So it's fantastic that we had access to a resource like that. Um, and also, just on a technical level, we had, um, with lots of teachers new to, you know, sort of really engaging with the platform in a serious way, we had lots of new demands for things to do on the platform. And so we set about very quickly sort of scouring the, uh, the plugins database for things that we could drop in and, and make available to teachers to meet the various needs, uh, the new needs that they, they had uh, brought to our attention. Yeah, we, we survived in the first five, four, six, five to six weeks, and then we think, oh, if that's the time we can have a break, boss. <laughs> <laughs> My boss told me no. Uh, we've been told by the senior management team of the university, the whole semester will go online, which uh, brought a lot of uh, new challenges, things like online assessments. This is a sentence I quoted from uh, one of my favorite movies. I think this crisis uh, also give us the opportunities to be courageous. So when we need to uh, build the arc uh, to uh, provide a, a place for all the staff and the students to be on board before the flood, we need the courage, we need the uh, innovative uh, contribution and the collaborate with each other. So this is what we have done. We have uh, developed uh, these arrangements for assessments, the documents and the guidelines for the staff to consider uh, how can they set up uh, appropriate online assessments elements and to assess the students' learning outcomes. And as the educational technologies team, we provided different uh, training sessions and uh, materials for, to guide the staff for example, this screenshot you can see, this is uh, one of the course we have developed to uh, 
to guide the staff um, to know how to set up appropriate online quiz to facilitate the online examinations. We have successfully arranged over 200 online formal examinations by using the online quiz and the online assi assignment activities. From the technical point of view, there are no major issues. And for the students, they have experienced uh, disruptions during the lockdown and also uh, a lot of challenges of uh, uh, learning from home and to adjust this new mode of fully online education. But as you can see from this result of the grade, our students, they have achieved a positive grade and they are learning outcomes. So overall, uh, we think we survived in this uh, battle. And uh, finally, we're at this point right now where it's the end of the semester, our assessments are out of the way, learning and teaching is over. And we were kind of hoping that there's, you know, there's land on the horizon um, and, and the floodwaters are starting to go down. But we've actually just found out recently that it looks like next semester for us and, and probably for a lot of people around the world, there's going to be a whole lot more online learning and teaching. Um, a lot of our staff and students, again, are located overseas and they, they won't be able to get back to China. Um, before the start of the next semester in, in September. So we will be continuing to do a lot of our, our activities as a university online. But um, we've learned a lot of lessons from this, this previous semester, these last six months. Um, we've, we've put into practice a lot of things now that will, will be very useful, I think, for the next semester. So we're very sort of hopeful and confident that we'll be able to do um, a good job next semester with supporting staff and students uh, again. Um, so with all of that said, uh, finally, just to say thank you very much for, uh, for listening to our, our presentation today. Um, thank you everyone for your attention. And if you'd like to get in touch with either of us, myself or my colleague Nali, please do. Our, our email addresses are here. Um, and otherwise, uh, we'd just like to say we hope that you enjoy the rest of your Moodle Moot experience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Roland, Roland. and Nali. And Nali. Um, um, just uh, monitoring the questions question. here, and uh, we don't see any uh, at this point. Um, however, I was—I uh, um, have a question myself, and that is: um, besides the, um, uh, the 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 response that you received from the students uh, that you showed on your graph there, um, are are there any other ways that you are thinking about um, quantifying? Uh, the success or, or not of your courses. Um, I think that seems like it's going to be a, a real uh, big area of, of concern, an area of inquiry. Um, how do we know that our, on our online courses are successful, uh, especially when we've had to go from, um, in many instances, uh, a, a blended learning environment, but, but sometimes where there is no, uh, there was no an online element uh, to, to uh, uh, a situation where it's completely online. Thanks, Michael. That's a, a really great question. And, and there's, there's two answers for that from our side. Um, both of those really involve um, surveying and questioning students and staff, actually, about the, the courses and, and, and delivery this, this past semester. Every semester, in fact, in this university, we deliver what we call module questionnaires, which are um, formal formal surveys of the quality of learning and teaching and students answer these surveys. They rate the quality of what they've learned, the quality of the teaching um, and, and various other factors as well. So we get a lot of very useful information through that formalized process, which um, again, you know, sort of feeds back into to, to changes for the next semester. We haven't got the results of that yet. Um, so we'll be looking with, with great interest when they are made available, hopefully within the next couple of weeks or so. In addition to that, we also do an annual survey ourselves as an education technologies team um, around the use of the platform, around the use of Moodle. Um, and again, we, we embed questions into there concerning how has the platform sort of 
benefited your learning and teaching? In what ways? Um, what challenges have you encountered? Um, and we, you know, particularly this semester, we're very interested to hear what people will be telling us through that that uh, that channel as well. So again, we're, we're right now we're sort of in, in a, a sort of waiting period, just waiting to get some of this data and information back from our, our, our staff and students. Um, but again, it will be very very interesting, I think, for us to look at that in, in due course. Sure, and I guess I guess that's one of the great things about Moodle, isn't it? That it's uh, that it can be modified and, and you can change uh, your course, even you know, right in the middle of a course if need be. But um, the the idea is always to solicit that feedback uh, from from your learners uh, and and make changes a, as you go, and and hopefully that 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 constant feedback um, means that you're always improving your performance. Yeah, um, definitely. We are, we are getting a couple of questions coming through. Um, uh, we received one and it says, uh, thank you for your shared experiences, um, uh, which looks a, a lot like the way we have worked. And, and Alex is asking, with assessments, with a small team, how did you handle the fact that students were using their own devices for taking assessments? Um, it, I'm not going to lie, it's been very, very challenging and um, we had a lot to think about when we realised that all of our assessments across the university would be delivered fully online. Um, and one of, one of the challenges, of course, was how do we ensure the security, the robustness, the, the equity of that experience for students. Um, the way we've managed to do that, I think, hopefully, is to implement a sort of a, a quality assurance process almost. Um, so when our teachers, for example, were developing quizzes and quiz activities and questions and things like that, um, we worked with them as actively as we could. Um, and right up until they delivered the, the quiz activities to students, we actually were doing things like going in and checking settings and making sure everything was configured in a very, um, again, a secure and sort of robust way for us. In, in particular for us, that, in, you know, that, that involved things like sequential delivery of questions, um, I'm trying to think of some of the, the other ways we lock this down. Um, minimizing feedback, obviously time limits and things like that. Um, so those are just some of the ways that we, we, we sort of approach this process. However, we, we realize it's not foolproof, it's not complete, and we've got a lot of work to do for the next semester to, to further improve and enhance that process. And we're looking at things like possibly online proctoring, as well as use of the safe exam browser, for example, um, now that it's it's really nicely integrated with Moodle 3.9 as well. Sure. Enough. Yeah, th this whole element of proctoring is, has become really important. And um, as you said, I, I, I don't believe that there's a, any 100% a foolproof way of, of ensuring that there isn't any um, people trying to get around the system. But um, again, it's that idea of, of constant improvement. And, um, and, and, and two, uh, th this, this concept of, um, of ensuring that over time, you're um, doing multiple assessments. You're looking at many ways of, of, of assessing, is that information getting through to the learners over and over again so you don't have to um, have everything uh, uh, that's contingent on you know, one exam, for instance. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, Lina, sorry. Yeah, I was about to say the mock exam also worked quite well, yeah. especially for using these new technologies to facilitate online examinations. The mock exam gives the students and teachers some idea about the limits of the technology, because you know technology is not perfect. Uh, they need to know the limitation of the technology and to make a good strategy how to minimize the uh, uh, burden of the technology will bring and then they can benefit most out of this uh, online uh, examination. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, another question, um, uh, the, the question is asking, uh, the question is asking about plugins. Uh, what plugins were in the database for teachers like, and they're asking for some examples. Well, for us, uh, actually, a lot of the plugins that we looked at or, or, or had to search for very quickly were, again, related to assessment. So we are a university that's, that's quite uh, heavily focused on science and mathematics and engineering. 
Um, but a lot of those disciplines in our university hadn't done online assessments very much before. So we were looking again at things we could use and drop in to, to support them. So lots of question types, um, things like the stack question type, formulas, um, all these kinds of specialist science related question types were things that we needed. Um, we needed a, uh, a, a more sort of um, a more robust way to do question and answer forums, for example, as well. So we found a nice plugin called the Over, uh, Moodle Overflow, I think it's called. Um, things like that, things that we hadn't necessarily implemented fully ourselves in the system previously that, that teachers were now raising as a demand were what we were searching for. Um, uh, sorry, the names escape me right now, but the, you know, there was quite a long sort of list of stuff that we looked for and we found and we, we put in, I think we put in almost about 20 different plugins in total over the, the last couple of months um, to, to satisfy that need. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, uh, the next question uh, again is from again from from Alex um, asking um, what was the attitude of lecturing staff, especially those who have not used an LMS, to having to go online. Oh, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Alex, for the question. I think yeah, we we do get a lot of uh, digital immigrants, uh, especially for our staff, and. Uh, uh, in, in this online education transformation, uh, teachers, uh, they, they, they are not used to use new technology, but they have to do it. The training sessions uh, helped a lot from the feedbacks. A uh, lot of the teachers uh, before, they may be uh, with uh, anxiety to, uh, to try these new things. But then in the situ situation, they have to try it, then they get some benefits from it. And then they are willing to more desirable to, to know better. So I think, yeah, uh, overall, our teachers, uh, they, they are also transforming from cognitive uh, about uh, what is the technology in house learning. And this, uh, a uh, special situation has provided uh, all of us the uh, opportunity to reflect on um, what we have done before and uh, what we will do for the future. That's an uh, answer from me. Sure. Great, great. And I guess, uh, again, one of the, the benefits of, the, of using the Moodle platform is that uh, lectures can, can come to Moodle um, with very little experience and can start out uh, using using just a couple of the the resources or activities in Moodle, uh, start out very small. Maybe it's just you know kind of putting some of that content online and, and using Moodle as a repository. But very soon, lectures, if they are um, uh, you, you know if if they're kind of caught by the Moodle bug, then they say, oh, what other tools are there? What other things can I build? What what you know what what is this quiz module about and and they can quickly um, build up their their uh, their skills uh, around Moodle and pretty soon uh, you know teachers are are developing these quite sophisticated and very powerful uh, courses in Moodle. Definitely. Okay, yeah. um, we've got um, uh, another question here um, again from from Alex. Uh, and Alex is, is uh, stated that the moot, the moot has shown that there are quite a lot of people struggling with the same issues, especially with assessments. Um, and the question is, I think it would be beneficial uh, that we create a community of practice with Moodle personnel to find better solutions. Well, I just might add there that um, this is really what the Moodle Net project is about is all about. Uh, and some of you may know uh, about the Moodle Net project and and maybe some some of our listeners don't. Uh, the Moodle Net project is is this concept of of a curated area where uh, teachers, uh, instructors, lecturers can uh, create um, uh, resources and and tools that they they use. But it's it's uh, it's it's uh, it's a curated uh, a group of of things that are that are best practice, and they can uh, share their experiences with others who are um, uh, using the same uh, tool. But it's 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 much bigger than Moodle. It's about uh, building best practice in education. Uh, so it's it's kind of a social platform uh, for educators where where they can go, and it's um, while it's 
um, it has Moodle at, at the heart of, of the Moodle Net project. Um, it goes it goes well beyond that, uh, and it's it's more than just technology, but it's building um, uh, best practice as well. Yeah, we, we're, it's very interesting. You mentioned Moodle Net, actually, Michael. We're very excited about that, and we're really looking forward to um, to participating in that project. And you know, we here within China, for example, we're, we're very keen to to set a Moodle Net server up and to connect with other people. Um, and, and certainly in, in the kind of situation that we've just been placed in, and, and of course that people all around the world have been placed in, being able to share knowledge, you know, share your your ideas, your practices, your questions, your, you know, all of that information, um, sharing it across the community would be so beneficial. And, and you know, in, in this last six months, having something like that available, I think would have, would have made this process so much easier for so many people around the world. Um, so let's hope that it is coming soon and um, you know we'll, we'll get as much benefit out of it as we can when, when that happens. Sure. Great. Um, well that's it for the questions. Um, at this point we still have a couple minutes left um, but I don't see any other questions. Uh, any other final comments or um, observations? Uh, Lena, do you have anything? <laughs> uh, about Moodle Net, I tried to register it, but it says uh, it is now uh, by invite, so we cannot register account to the Moodle Net. Okay. Yes. Well, um, I don't have the address uh, right off the top of my head, but um, we do have a, a team of, of people at Moodle uh, who can help you. So. Um, uh, go to the Moodle Net uh, um, website, and undoubtedly there's there's a contact there where you can um, uh, make it known that you're interested in, and uh, I'm sure they'll be happy to get you involved in the project. Thank you, thank you, Michael. I think a very quick final comment from me, Michael, would be thank you very much to Moodle for you know for organising something like this. It's uh, it's it's the perfect time, and it's it's fantastic to have this opportunity to uh, to interact with people around the world who were doing very very similar things and all engaged in solving these kinds of problems during this time. Um, for us, it's been a great experience to have you know to have this opportunity and access to those people. Um, so again, thank you to you know to yourself and all of your colleagues for uh, for making this this possible. I think. Yes, I agree. It's it's a it's an exciting time. So, thank you, thank you very much.